it was in 1962 that I tried to register the 31st of August in 1962. And I had worked as a timekeeper and a sharecropper on a plantation for 18 years. I was fired that same day. And the man that I had worked for said they wasn't ready for that in Mississippi. Every time the Republicans get in, that the, the wages go down and the work gets scarce and everything, but as soon as they get in a Democrat president, everything begins to boom. I wouldn't see, no, no, I wouldn't vote even if I had the opportunity to vote. Why not? But I don't see where either party would do, either party is benefiting uh, the mass of people any good whatsoever. Uh, I think there is still a good deal of apathy that we have to grapple with in, in the Negro community. Uh, we see this both north and south, and uh, I think it is a job that must be done. The National Educational Television Network presents Of People and Politics. 21 programs about the way Americans perpetuate the political system under which they live. Now, The Negro Voter, with Richard D. Hefner. Since World War II, the Negro in America has become increasingly conscious of his political rights. In 1944, the whites-only primaries in the South were abolished and Negroes began to vote in the South in meaningful numbers for the first time since Reconstruction. Of course, they had long since exercised this right in the North. And now in 1964, after two decades, in most parts of the country, the Negroes' right to vote, like any other citizens, is an accepted fact. And of course, the Negroes' voting power can be listed among his most important assets. In 1960, the Negro vote was highly important. Some say it swung the presidential election to John F. Kennedy. The Negro vote is becoming a crucial element in determining who has political control in our cities and indeed throughout the nation. Yet the Negro vote is a great and intangible factor in this presidential election year. How will the Negro vote in 1964? Will he vote in a block? Will race be his prime motivation? Will he go Democratic? Will he perhaps vote Republican? does the Negro voter want? Well, I may not uh, particularly approve his leadership, but I would vote certainly for Mr. Powell again because he is the ranking Negro in Congress. He has a great deal of influence. And I like this, and I think that more Negro people should see a man in leader, a leadership position. You cannot make political gains unless you deal with the people who have access to the power. And every politician knows this, and until the Negro in the South becomes aware of his true influence and the devices available to him, he will be electing Negro candidates who will be seat warmers. I think the Negro tends to vote for the candidate naturally, whom they think is going to do the best uh, that they can for the Negro and his needs. But I also think that that's true of white people, too. The Negro voter, like the white voter, votes his interests, economic, social, political. He votes against the man who would push him around or who would deny him economically. He votes for the man he thinks is friend. Yet Negro voting influence varies. It depends on where you live, south, north, border state. And it depends on Negro numbers. Three areas of the country represent three stages of the development of Negro voting power. Mississippi, where Negro numbers are great, but where Negroes still find it difficult to exercise our most basic right, the right to vote. The liberal North, where Negroes have been able to vote freely for years, but where Negroes are a comparatively small percentage of the population. The border areas and parts of the South where Negroes have the voting rights of the North within the racial conditions of the South, and where Negro numbers are great. Mississippi, 42% of the population is Negro, though white adults outnumber Negro adults two to one. Only 6% of the Negro population votes. 
In Forest County, there are 14,752 Negroes. 12 are registered voters. Whites fear young Negroes. Charles Evers, brother of the assassinated Medgar Evers, has taken over Medgar's old position as leader of the Jackson, Mississippi NAACP chapter. What does Charles Evers think about the progress of voting registration? At the present, voter registration is very slow. Uh, we're having many difficulties in trying to get Negroes registered. Why? You, you see, in Mississippi, it, the population is practically half of uh, Negro and half white. And through this, in certain sections, we have much more resistance from the whites. What would happen if Negroes in Mississippi got the right to vote tomorrow? Pulitzer Prize winning Mississippi newspaper publisher Harding Carter. And in those uh, beats, those uh, uh, precincts, those other political subdivisions, uh, where the Negro outnumbered the whites, uh, the Negro would elect the Negro. And elsewhere, the whites. This is not true in my county. I don't think it's true. I know it's not true along the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, where the Negro votes. But almost everywhere else, it would be strictly racial and bitter. As it is, racism is a part of Mississippi politics. Mississippi politician and state like treasurer Bill Winters. Constructive approach to the problems of our state without uh, bringing in a great many uh, issues that uh, frequently amount to dragging dead cats across the path of the voters. I think there's a certain amount of bitterness, it seems to me, that is expected of a candidate for governor on certain issues. Why is that? And what kind of bitterness? Well, it uh, is a part, of course, of the age-old technique of uh, using the race issue. To attract, uh, to attract votes. Negro political participation in Mississippi will come in some distant day. In the State House of Mississippi, three Negroes, candidates for congressional office, tread on marble and register their candidacies in offices which have been off limits to all but Negro janitors for close to a century. It says that upon the hearing of a primary election contest, or complaint. This deals with the other section that Brenda was mentioned that if you feel that you have that that there's been something something has gone wrong in uh, this in sadly the, in, in is the, a political uh, meeting in Mississippi. Can the candidates plan I'll their campaign. The, the woman is Mrs. Was, Fannie Lou Hamer from the poverty-stricken Mississippi That's Delta. Does she think she has a chance to win? No. Why are you running? Well, you see, all the people are not. Uh, elected, you know, all the people was not, what I mean is uh, Whitten, the man that is congressman now, all the people didn't elect him because Negroes wasn't allowed to vote. You anticipate much white opposition? I do. Uh, do Negroes ever get uh, intimidated or shot at because they uh, run for public office? They get shot at without being running for public office, so... <laughs> I don't think I have no other choice because they shot into a house 16 times for me after I just tried to register the first time. Do you think Negro leadership would help cure poverty? Yes, I think so. Why? Because don't anybody want to see his fellow man or his brother down? I mean, we don't actually, we don't actually want to take anything from the white person. We just want what's actually ours, what have been ours so long. And we are ready for it, and we want that now. This is Mrs. Hamer's kickoff campaign meeting. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Mike Arm. And most of the people know me and know what I try. What is happening in the state of Mississippi, 
They are doing all they can to force the Negro out of the state of Mississippi. The type of education that we get in the state of Mississippi. We couldn't go to no other place in the North and get a decent job. So the thing we gonna do, we went to bed last night, it's old black joke yeah. with our heads hanging low. But this morning, we woke up a different joke. Yeah. Our head is not hung down anymore. And some of these things that Mr. Whitney is putting down, we're going to try to change it. The church we visited in Mississippi, in which Mrs. Hamer held her kickoff campaign meeting, has since been burned. In the North and in many parts of the South, unlike Mississippi, Negroes have been able to vote freely for years. They can run for office freely. They have all the legal rights that any citizen has in the American democracy. Negroes are falling into a pattern common to many big city groups. They tend to vote Democratic because they think that party is more responsive to their needs. Well, at least, uh, to my opinion, everybody has a better chance but the Democrats didn't do when the Republicans were in. Who are you going to vote for in 1964? Johnson. Why? The best candidate in the South. You ever vote a Republican in your life? No. Who do you usually vote for? The Democratic Party all the way. Kennedy got over 70% of the Negro vote in 1960. Johnson is expected to do as well. In every national election since the 30s, except 56, when many Negroes voted for Eisenhower, Negroes have voted strongly Democratic. Why? Former Postmaster General Fawley. Well, I think that many of those came into the party. They were always Republicans. But they came into the party in large numbers, and then later on in larger numbers, after Mr. Roosevelt was elected. Mr. Roosevelt uh, did everything he could to be helpful. And in his first administration, he made appointments, and he gave every evidence that he looked upon the Negro vote of the people as being overlooked, so to speak, and he did everything he could to aid them, and I think aid them. And he brought them, in my judgment, into the Democratic Party, where they are now in large measure. Do Northern Negroes vote in a block? Democrat and Manhattan Borough President Edward R. Dudley. I would doubt it. Uh, I have not discerned any evidence of, of block voting Apart from some local school issues in small communities in the North, you would probably find some of this. But generally speaking, I would think that the Negro is going to vote as an individual. The fact that a great majority of them will vote one particular way simply means that the issues of the day and of the time in that particular community would direct the great majority of them to vote this way. The Democrats solidified their hold on the Negro vote in 1948 at their national convention. Southern Democrats walked out of the convention due to strong pressure for a pro-civil rights platform. They nominated South Carolinian Strom Thurmond as the Dixiecrat candidate for the presidency, and Harry S. Truman ran on a pro-civil rights platform. To the surprise of many, despite the split in his party, Truman won. Negro voting power is strong. Political leaders often balance their slates with Negro candidates. Edward R. Dudley on the effect of Negro voting power in New York. Well, first of all, I think the effect has been to make it impossible for other than, to use the term loosely, liberal candidates to be elected to office. This is, this is one of the effects. Uh, uh, and depending upon the issues that we're talking about, it would be impossible for a man to run on a segregation platform here or anywhere near here and get any votes. He couldn't be elected dog catcher. Presumably, Negro voting power has a more subtle effect than Judge Dud Dudley suggests. But the ballot box is colorblind, so that in each election, national or local, considerable effort is expended to get as many Negro votes as possible. But what effect does all this effort have in the Negro community? Negro voting participation is well below that of any other key American group. In 1960, some 81% of eligible whites voted. In the same year, only 54% of eligible Negroes voted. Why? A former aide to Martin Luther King, Jim Wood, now news director of a chain of radio stanches, has an answer. 
Very simple. Number one, the Negro traditionally has never been a part of the community. You have to have a certain kind of patriotic pride in a community to take part in what happens in it. Negroes have been excluded by segregation and fear from participation in local things. And for this reason, uh, there is this low level of interest in taking part. Yes. You gonna vote in this election? I'm gonna vote for who is for me. And I'm trying to gain. I told you, I got four kids. It's not but the same women, but they're children. And I'm the father of children. I'm a young boy. And I feel as though I had an opportunity, but I wrecked it. But I'm trying to correct this. But now, you ask me another question. I answer for you. I have stopped voting since last year before last. I don't vote anywhere. Why? Because I don't want to. If I don't want to be mixed up with anybody. The, the franchise that we have does work. But the majority of people are too damn lazy to exercise that franchise. There can be little interest in voting when you feel the system does not work for you. There is an important exception to the broad pattern of Negro voting, which seems to have emerged in the North, where most Negroes vote Democratic. In areas of the South and in border states, places where Negroes have the voting rights of the North within the racial setting of the South, there are almost as many Negro Republicans as Democrats. Now, this older pattern of Negro voting stems back to Reconstruction days. Negroes in cities like Baltimore and Atlanta are frequently Republican, largely in protest, perhaps, against the segregationist-oriented Democratic Party of the South. But the question is whether, through their votes in these places, Negroes have been able to achieve even comparatively meaningful gains. Can Negroes get things done with the power of the vote, even through segregationist politicians? An old-time Atlanta Negro leader, A.T. Oh, Walden. yes. Yes, because uh, when they realize that our vote is sufficient to affect their election, they can change overnight. Some of them do. Once uh, you develop one-third of your electorate, uh, well, Atlanta Constitution electorate Editor becomes, uh, Eugene Patterson. Uh, then you can't very well uh, offend those voters. You must serve their needs as well as serving the needs of the white voters. Well, the Negro vote is another vote as far as I'm concerned. We, we made up our mind... Atlanta think, Mayor Ivan Allen ago, Jr. ...that uh, Atlanta was made up of citizens and that every man was entitled to... Uh, uh, an equal right of citizenship. And this was not accomplished, has not been accomplished, is not yet accomplished in all areas. Do you think the Negroes in Atlanta will vote as a block? No, I don't think that uh, the Negro votes as a block. I think he is driven into block voting. The reapportionment of Fulton County, Georgia, three years ago, permitted the election of a Negro state senator, Leroy Johnson. I knew that in order to be effective, I had to not only know what I was doing when I went to the Senate, but I had to win friends and I had to influence people. I had to have support for I am one person out of 54 and members of the Senate, one out of 259 of the total legislature. So far, my relationship with the other members of the Senate and, with the, and members of the House of Representatives uh, been very good. My first year in the Senate, it was a very formal type of relationship. It was good morning, Senator, good evening, Senator, do you have a match, Senator, and this kind of relationship. The second year, it was a backslapping, handshaking uh, type of relationship. It was the relationship which, which indicated that you were beginning to get on the inside of politics. It was, I need your vote, Senator, on Senate Bill 106 or 107. This kind of relationship, which was good. Can a lone Negro office holder like Leroy Johnson really accomplish anything in a Southern legislature? Jim Wood. He's a seat warmer. He was supported by the party, supported by the white press, and has done nothing. He has attacked none of the principal problems of Negroes in the South. Jobs, votes, physical terror, lack of justice in courts, etc. But doesn't his very presence uh, imply something? Well, it gives Negroes a good feeling, for whatever that's worth. It doesn't put shoes on uh, naked black feet. It, uh, it doesn't get jobs. It doesn't increase income. How do you get this? 
Well, you get it through attacking the problems. The usefulness of a Negro candidate is to embarrass the political structure he's a part of by reminding the nation through publicity what it isn't doing that it should do and to point up the contradictions. Uh, this not only informs the white electorate, but the Negro electorate and begins this cultural sophistication pattern we have been discussing. It establishes issues that are issues. Today, Negroes do not have clearly defined political issues because nobody, even Negro leaders, are not establishing issues. In the South, an intensive voter registration drive has added 600,000 Negroes to the voter rolls since 1960, an increase of almost 40 percent. There are now more than two million registered Negroes in 11 southern states, a fact which could have the most profound consequences on the future political structure of the South. Senator John Sparkman of Alabama. Well, Alabama, contrary to the thinking of a lot of people, Alabama has been uh, uh, pretty uh, uh, forward in uh, Negro registration. Uh, we, uh, as far back as I can remember, I can recall Negroes registering in my county without any uh, restriction, without any holdback, registering just like uh, white people. And I think that was true generally of the state. Now it's true the Civil Rights Commission picked out three or four counties mm -hmm. in which they found irregularities. Uh, the thing we must remember is that uh, uh, it takes, a, it takes an urge to get people to vote. I'm sorry to say that that's true, but it is. What do you teach? English. High school English and literature. Uh, have you ever voted? No. Why not? I haven't been allowed to. I have filled out the application numbers of times. How many times? About 10 times over a period of 10 years. That was Margaret Jones Moore of Dallas County, Alabama. In Dallas County, there are 30,000 Negroes out of a total population of about 55,000. But on the voting rolls, there are 130 Negroes and 7,000 whites. A great number of these Negroes, people like Margaret Joan Moore, want to vote but can't, as the United States Civil Rights Commission has pointed out. In one community, however, Tuskegee, Alabama, the federal government has had an effect. The population is six to one Negro, but recently registered Negroes for the first time outnumbered registered whites. Tuskegee is the home of Tuskegee Institute, a fine Negro college, and the Negro population is largely middle class. The whites saw it coming. In 1957, the Alabama legislature, afraid of potential Negro political power, gerrymandered the Negro districts out of the city of Tuskegee. But in 1961, in Gomillion versus Lightfoot, the United States Supreme Court ruled that such gerrymandering because of race is illegal. Come November, Negroes will be represented on all major governing bodies in Tuskegee. Many say that in 1960, a call by John F. Kennedy to the wife of Martin Luther King, who had just been jailed in the South, swung the election in Kennedy's favor. Martin Luther King on that call and on the possible effect of Negro voting. Well, I don't profess to be a political analyst. Uh, there are those who contend that as a result of this call, many Negroes uh, felt that he was sympathetic with the Negro struggle and aspirations, and they voted for him. And in many of the states where the Negro vote is the balance of power, uh, it was a Negro vote that carried uh, President Kennedy over. Now, this may be altogether true, and uh, I think if it was true, uh, it demonstrates the power of the Negro vote and that it can be a very significant and effective instrument in any election. Uh, I think in the South, uh, it will bring about broader representation from the Negro community and Negroes will be elected to political positions that they've never been in before. I think it will also uh, free many of the white uh, Southern politicians who uh, are basically right within and have basically good instincts, but who feel that they must go along with certain uh, issues and vote a certain way uh, on the race question because they don't have enough votes, they feel, to merit taking a liberal stand. 
Uh, I think of senators uh, like the senators in Alabama, basically liberal on all of the major issues. So you come to civil rights, Senator Fulbright. It's very tragic that this is a man of tremendous vision and foresight, and yet he falls down on civil rights. Now, I think that these men are basically good, sound statesmen, but they are caught in the bind of not having the courage to take a stand because they don't think they have enough votes uh, to keep them going. I think we will free these men from that, and I think on the national scene we will liberalize the total political climate, and uh, I think it will bring an end to the coalition of right-wing Northern Republicans and Southern Dixocrats. We know the facts. The church we visited in Mississippi, in which Mrs. Hamer held her kickoff campaign meeting, has been burned. Racial tension seems to exist everywhere, not just in Mississippi. We see the headlines, and we know that in some parts of the nation, the Negro is systematically denied his most basic rights. But we know other things, too that the Negro, once he votes, like any man, votes what he instinctively thinks best for himself. He senses his interests, and he votes that way, like any man. There is no question but that many Negroes today, with the possible exception of those in border and southern states, prefer the Democratic Party. Whether Republicans can make any inroads in Negro Democratic strength this year is doubtful, for Lyndon Johnson is a strong Democratic candidate. In the North, however, many Negroes feel themselves to be in a, in a never-never land, unsure which way to turn, uncertain who their friends are, and they don't vote. In the South, largely because of the population ratio, the Negro opportunity in voting and the danger is greater. The path before the Negro, and before those who would join with him, is strewn with obstacles, even with violence. But all over the land, the winds of change are blowing. The direction is certainly forward.